If you didn't just hear me, we welcome you here to Center Church and welcome North Carolina. If you're in the area, we'd love to have you worship with us on Sunday morning at 9.10 here in the Christian Fellowship Center or at 11, 11.10. Uh, we're back in this building again. And then if you're an early bird, if you'd like to be with us at the Rise and Shine service at 8.30 in the car in the parking lot, we'd love to have you. There's a place for you. If you want to gather and worship in person, there is an opportunity here at Center for you to do that. We're glad you're with us back at home because worship is so important. And Jesus said every uh, that we were commanded to worship, that it was His custom to go and worship. And if He needed to worship, so do we. Hear the word of the Lord. Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing to the glory of His name. Make His praise glorious. Father, as we come into Your presence, may we shout Your name to an unbelieving world. By our very presence in this place, by our presence at home, we say that we believe in You. And we're trusting You. So, Lord, we give our hearts to You. Open our minds that we might receive all that You have for us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we prepare our hearts to worship and sing Sanctuary. This time we'll continue our worship as we, we return to God His tithe and our offerings. Those of you at home, you have the opportunity as well. If you'd like to support this ministry, uh, you can send that uh, through the church website. You can go on and then you can uh, click uh, donations and make that donation. Father, by faith we give to you. You have been good to us. You've been gracious to us. And we return that to you for the building of your kingdom. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>
We want to go to the Lord in prayer and lift up uh, some needs that this congregation has. A couple that I want to, to mention to you. We want to remember Gavin Hill in your prayers and him and his family during this time. We want to remember um, Tom Henderson and Diane. Tom has uh, moved into a, a period of time in his life that hospice is now taking care of him. So we want to, to pray for, for them during this this transition. We need to remember Tony Leonard as well. Tony uh, was to have some heart procedures. We need to remember him. Dean Slaybach as well is going to be going to the doctor for some continued treatment uh, for some cancer, and we need to remember him, and, uh, and there's many more. So uh, we also want to remember, uh, oh gosh, just died uh, Friday. Bruce Hayes, we want to remember Bruce Hayes' family. That family has lost a mom and dad, and so it's, it's, a, it's a tough season for them. So Let's pray together. Lord, we just, just pause to, to stop and thank you. You are worthy of all our praise. All glory and honor belongs to you. Everything that we as an individual and as a church has ever accomplished, has come by your hand. We have been blessed and you've provided for us. We're not worthy of that, but you've done that for us and we thank you. Lord, you know those that are going through some tough times right now that we named in, in, in our church. And we just lift up the Hayes family and we pray your healing for their spirits. and You draw them close to you as they move toward that uh, funeral here in a few days. We pray, God, that you'd be with Gavin and take care of him and, and increase his faith and give him comfort, Lord. and Bless the mom and dad and, Lord, the, the whole family right now. and Strengthen them. We pray, God, for uh, Tony as well. We pray for healing of his body. And we pray, Father, that you'd uh, be with... Uh, the Hendersons, and we pray for strength. Pray your Holy Spirit would just pick up Diane and give her the supernatural strength she needs and speak peace to Tom's heart. We pray, God, for mercy for him. And we ask, Lord, for Dean as well as he goes for other treatment and makes these doctor's appointments. We just uh, take care of him. We thank you, God, that your word says you'd never leave, that you'd never forsake us. So, God, as we're asking for you to be with people, we, we know, God, that you will be because you promised. Give them the faith to see you and to experience you. And Lord, help us as a country. Well, Father, we need your help. We need, God, for your intervening hand in circumstances for us. Now, we confess that we have sinned. We've sinned as a nation to act as though we could live without you. We've spurned you. We've, we've took prayer out of our schools. And God, we've done so much to break your heart. We pray for forgiveness and we pray for help. And we certainly realize as we pray to you that we don't deserve any of that mercy. But we ask for your help. God, we ask all of this today in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. I want to share with you today from, from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. We began the season of Lent Wednesday night at Ash Wednesday, and we're, content, we're marching toward the cross and at Easter morning. And so I want us to think a little bit this morning about temptation. Because Jesus faced temptation while he was in that wilderness for 40 days. And hear what the Scripture says about it. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. 
And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to this holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it's written, He will command His angels concerning you, and they'll lift you up in their hands, and, if you, and that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, It's also written, Do not test the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. And this I'll give to you, he said, if you'll bow down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it's written, Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. This is the Word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Father, open our minds, our hearts to what You have today. God, help us to understand where we might grow deeper with You. God, give us the boldness to walk with You. And Lord, You know Your children and You know where they're being tempted and we just pray for help for them. God, I pray that You'd help me as I preach. Give me clarity of thought and help me to recall those things that You'd have me to share today. And I certainly... I'm thankful your word says that your word would not return to you void, but would accomplish that which you've sent it forth to do. And so with that in mind, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk a little bit about temptation this morning, because temptation is something every single one of us goes through. Every single one of us. Uh, temptation, it, it comes from the evil one. It doesn't come from God. It comes from Him. And there's many today who don't believe in, in Satan and the, the very personality, the spirit of this evil one. Jesus spoke about him. That's all I can say is if you believe in Jesus, you've got to believe in Satan because Jesus spoke about him and what a real force he is into this world. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. John 10, 10. I come that you'd have life. Isn't that a marvelous thought about God? Now, I want you to think about in our world today, if it's of God, it's about life. It's about life. Anybody that pushes death is, is not of, of, of God. Now, the biggest thing I can ride on the horse for just a minute about is the whole movement of abortion in this country. And anybody that would build your life and your party upon that, my God, it's death. Jesus came to bring life. Life. He is a life force. He came to give life. And that's what Jesus' whole purpose was to do. But then He said the Satan came to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. See, He comes to tear you down, rob you of, of what God has for you. God has so much more, but Satan always will tell you, tell you to take the shortcut. Satan always tells you to go in the other direction or says you can live a certain way because everybody else is living a certain way. Satan always is trying to undermine the very presence and authority of God, frankly, and the kingdom of God. He's always opposed to the kingdom of God. That being said, Jesus has spent this 40 days of prayer and fasting. He's hungry. He's tired. We have to watch in the times that we're the most tired because Satan will come. I tell you, I get so tired. I, I, my family has told me to go to bed before because I'm not fit for nothing. But he will come at the times that you're the tiredest or the sickest and he can work on you. I remember when I had that covid we had just lost our sister-in-law. And uh, I was supposed to go preach my brother-in-law's funeral and her funeral that very day. And I would found out the day before I had COVID. And I was so down about that because I loved, my, I loved, my, I loved my, my folk. I loved them. And you know I was off in that little old room, closed up. They had me closed up in this little hole. The only thing I had for a day was I'd have to wait on them to bring me my food. Donald, I sat there the first night at supper and the clock's ticking. 
I'm thinking, when am I going to get supper? And so I started asking, well, they're going to get you something. Okay, I laid back down. I'm sitting there thinking about this situation. The food is not coming, children. Are you, are you with me? I get up again. I go to the door. And I said something about the food. My precious wife says, Annie's getting you food. Number four child is bringing me groceries. Okay, where is she? I don't know. Oh, folks, I slipped off. I went in there. I got my clothes on. I decided I'm going to get me some food. There was no reason I couldn't drive to McDonald's, okay? I had keys. I had gas. I had vehicles. Just as I get ready to do this, little sister comes in with my food. Now you see, I was so tired, I was getting beat down. I, I'm giving a good, I'm just trying to let you know how the evil one would just come and just and then then it was days he would just come in that room and just work on me, pinned in that little hole. We need God's people. We we need to be encouraged, and we, we have to stay connected. It's important. And we need to stay in His Word. Satan would co- was coming to Jesus in these low moments. He's hungry. He looks at these wafer lo- looking th- these, this limestone that was on the ground that looked like, looked like a bread. And he said to him, look at that bread right there. You can take that stone, you can turn it into bread. You can do that. And Jesus said, mm. man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now we need, we need food. We need food. We can substitute good food for junk food. And I do it so many times. We all do because it's fast, right? But it's not what we really need. We can substitute the Word of God for fast stuff. We can substitute for just, just a smidgen, just enough to get by. But we need to grow with it, grow and mature with it. There was one thing that was great about that whole time being pinned down in that room was... I was made to study the Bible. I was made to study. I was made to pray. And I, I, we, I had some precious times with the Lord doing it. But it's bad it takes getting sick to be made and pinned down to do that. But man cannot live by bread alone just like we take and substitute junk food. We can substitute spiritual stuff too. And I give the illustration this morning. If, if we're not careful... We can substitute not taking time to really grow in His Word and, and praying and asking God to help us and speak to our heart through the Word. We just like get the upper room down. Most of us read that every day or we get on the computer and have something that comes to us. And that's great, but you know, that's fast food. We need to take some time to feed our spirit, to really feed it. Reading it. Getting the Scripture down. What's the Scripture that they've gotten along for me to read in that, in that upper room or whatever? What's it saying? Read the Scripture. Pray about it. Pray about needs you have. But then, even further though, you need to take time to memorize Scripture. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But Jesus said, no. We can't just live by food alone. We need other things. And that's the thing that bothers me so much about this whole COVID thing. We need the Word of God, folks. We need worship. If Jesus needed that, how much more do we need that? If Folks, if you're well enough to go to the store to get your groceries at Food Line or wherever you go, you need to go to worship. We're in the parking lot. Don't give me this stuff that you're scared to death. If you're scared to go to Food Line, you can come to the parking lot and worship. Now, folks, it's important for you to take care of your spirit. You have got to do that. You need other people because Satan will come along and slip into your life. You need to be calling other people up that are Christian, encouraging you in the Christian walk. A, 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 a person who has isolated themselves is in a dangerous situation and you need other people. Jesus didn't walk this earth alone. He walked it with 12 disciples. Paul, when you read about the great Apostle Paul and all the things he accomplished, you never read just about Paul. You'll read about Paul and Barnabas, Paul and Silas, Paul and Titus, always Paul and somebody else. You need other people. And this, this, is a, this has become a season in our country to be lax in every aspect of it. I, you name whatever 
you, you deal with from the IRS, you deal with, with the grocery store clerks, you deal with, with whatever, your distributors, whoever you're dealing with. COVID has become an excuse for us not to be doing quality work. And it's been given a time that we're not growing with the Lord and we need to grow with Him. Now, folks, we have got to make those decisions. Nobody can do that for us. We have to make those decisions. We cannot live by bread alone, but by the Word of God. And every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And you need to be studying His Word. You need to be with His people. You need to be growing. Your Sunday school class needs to be meeting. You need to be making decisions about how you can meet, if that's by Zoom or whatever, if it's calling two or three up on a conference call, whatever. Don't give me this that we can't get together. You can get together if you want to. We do what we want to do. All right, that's enough said about that. The other temptation that came to Jesus was not only about the Word of God, but it, the other temptation that came to Him was, was, was this whole thing of... of uh, Using your gifts to twist and use for your advantage. Now, the, what I'm talking about is he takes him up on the high point of the, tar, uh, the, 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 the temple and looks down into the Kidron Valley, some 400 feet below. You could look at all over that magnificent valley. And, and Satan says to him, look here, you, you just jump off of that thing. You can jump off of that. Think about how the people would have been amazed at him. He jumps off into that valley and walks around and teaches I mean, you, that's pretty phenomenal, isn't it? He says to him, Satan does. Or he says he's going to take care of you. You won't even get hurt. You can do that, you can do that, Jesus. He used the Word of God to throw back at Jesus. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Think about every morning as the sun rose up. You know what happened in, in Jerusalem? A lone man would stand at the point of the of the temple pinnacle and blow the trumpet for the time to arise and to come to prayer every morning. Man, people would have been gathered. Just jump off into that temple court. Man, that'd have been good. You're talking about a show. People have been drawn to him. Woo, this ain't this ain't just a John Wesley or a Billy Graham. This is Jesus. Boy, this is a great thing, right? I mean people have been a, this is phenomenal, man. This is some great prophet. Wow, he can jump off and still live and survive. Oh, this kind of fellow I want to follow. Sounds like a good idea, but you know what happens when people build, if you try to build your ministry on the phenomenal, guess what you got to do? you got to build something else more phenomenal the next day and the next day and the next day. Uh, there, Chris Angel, he's a great magician. Maybe you've seen him on TV. He does all kind of stuff. I mean, that man... I saw him one time, he made that plane disappear. You remember that plane he made disappear? He does all kind of stuff. Well, see what he has to do? He has to do something for the next show. It has to be bigger and better, right? That's not the way Jesus built his ministry. He didn't build his ministry on magic. He didn't build his ministry throwing food around. Oh, he could feed people. He did it. He didn't build his ministry just making people well. He did do some of that, but that wasn't his whole ministry. You see, that the people always wanted to make Jesus something else. And Satan is trying to make Jesus something else. But Jesus wouldn't fall for it. Instead, he begins to quote back and he says, No, you shouldn't tempt the Lord your God by doing stuff like that. No. Are you using your gifts? Are you using your gifts for God's glory or for your kingdom? That's the temptation, just as it was for Jesus. Maybe that's your temptation today. And let me say this to you. What tempts me will maybe won't tempt you. We're all individuals, and Satan knows that, and he knows where our weak link is. And whatever that weak link is, that's what he works at. That's where he works at with you. And then he does the, the, the final temptation. The temptation that speaks to so many people's hearts. He says, if you just bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. That's something. Was that still while he was out there on that and he shows him all these kingdoms of the earth? He says, you just bow down, you'll get all that. All that power will come to you because I'm going to give it to you. Now, that's one of the greatest temptations that man and women fall for, for even from the beginning of time. It's that I can be in charge of my own life. 
It happened way back with Adam and Eve, didn't it? You can live like you want to live. You can do what you want to do. And it felt they lost, well, they got kicked out of house and home, didn't they, because of it. They lost it all. They lost that precious relationship with the Lord. They lost it all. The temptation to want to have your own power. The only power we need is the power of God. Young or old, and no matter how you go in your life, how far you go, you need to realize over and over again, everything you have comes from the Lord. It all comes from Him. Don't think you're so smart that you amassed this amount of wealth or this amount of this or that. Boy, I did this. No, you didn't do anything. We could start naming names to name. I could name names to, to you today that they're not going to be here long. And what they've got will just rot away. What matters is building the kingdom of God. In every instance, Satan was coming to Jesus and quoting the Scripture to Him. He came to a point of, when He was low. And He also came to Him at points of high moments. And it's both of them in that passage. One, the very first, the temptations come to Him after He's baptized. This is a high moment in His life. It's a great spiritual moment. It's after that point that Satan begins to come to Him and begins to work on Him. If you're not careful in a church, when you have a, when you have a true movement of God, you've got to be careful because Satan will start working. Start working. There's an undertow that's going to surely begin to happen. So you have to be careful. Do you remember Elijah when he, with the 400 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel? Do you remember that he calls down the fire from heaven? And all those, those prophets are destroyed. And it looks like God's won the day. I mean, it looks like a great day for the Lord. And it was a great day if you read the story with Elijah on Mount Carmel. But then immediately after that, what happens? He's wanting God to take him. He's so depressed. Because Queen Jezebel, the Mary Kay salesman, says, I'm going to kill you. You send word, I'm going to kill that old boy first chance I get. And so, wow, he's scared for his life. He's depressed. Where's God? Lord, take me. That's what he says to God. Take me, Lord, take me. It was after the high, mo high moment in his life. You've got to be careful. In the high moments as well as the low moments, when you're the tiredest the most, that's when that evil one will come. You've got to watch him. Because our adversary, Peter says, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Wow. I saw a, uh, one of these nature shows one time, and they showed these, these rangers on elephants somewhere. And they were going through this field, this high field with grass. And they're going through... And all of a sudden, as they're going through, this, this, this tiger jumps out out of nowhere and just jumps at some dude. You know, and you're going, wow. And they said, now watch. And they, they made a circle in the grass so you could finally see this tiger. And then they slow it all down. You can see that old tiger moving. He's watching his prey, wasn't he? We got a little cat. All that little kitten used to do. It never did anybody else that way, but it always did me. And it would, it would just lay low and it would just creep and creep. And when I at least expected it, it would have jumped on the couch and the next thing I know, it's on top of me. I, I, it scared me to death on and on and on. Now, bless her heart, she doesn't do that. But she was always looking for a prey. Satan is always looking for a prey. Looking for a way to destroy. Jesus said, man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every time Satan would quote the Scriptures, what did Jesus do? He quoted the Scripture back to Satan. I want to encourage you to, to grow in your faith to the point that you begin to write Scripture down, tape it on your, on your dash of your car, put it on a note card in your pocket, put it on your, on your mirror in your bathroom, put it on your kitchen table, whatever you need to do on your on your refrigerator and memorize that scripture put it to memory so you can quote it uh, you'll need it there's a time that you're going to need that and you can quote that back to the Lord and I tell you folks it could come a time when we don't have the precious scripture but you've already hit it in your heart and, and that could very well happen in, in our time it really could and you need, to, you need to study the scripture you at home I hope you'll study his scripture and just put it in your heart. And uh, 
I hope that you've been challenged in your faith to walk closer to Him today. Just know we love you and we thank you for joining with us. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We praise you for everything. Lord, help us to walk with you in a deeper walk. God, just help us to apply your word to our heart that we'll, that we'll be uh, built on a firm foundation. Lord, that we won't build on our own lives, but on you. Father, we so need you. You know where we're struggling, and we just ask for your help. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're so glad to have uh, Marty and Molly with us, uh, helping us these last two weeks. And we'll have Kat back with us next week. But we're so thankful to have them for coming out on a cold morning to share with us. Thank you. Would you have a prayer at the end? And sing a familiar praise song. I'll fly away. close our service today we thank you for the opportunity that we had to come and worship in your house Lord we thank you for a beautiful morning a new day and the bright sunshine and I ask Lord that we we all take heed to Mitch's message and that we become more familiar with God's Word and the Holy Scriptures bless us this week and thank you for for being in our lives Amen <laughs>